Welcome to HB Tuner's Ford Gen 2 Coyote Training Part 29. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how to dial in our torque tables, so how we calibrate the torque and the inverse tables to make sure that our torque model is intact and everything is functioning properly. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at how to dial in our torque tables for our Gen 2 Ford Coyote applications. The purpose of dialing in our torque tables is to reduce our IPC wheel torque errors that can put us into a throttle shutdown mode. We want to keep the safety of our IPC wheel torque plausibility check in place so that if we do have a dangerous situation where we have a throttle get stuck open, it can go into limp mode and safely get the car off the road. We don't want to go and just disable the system completely because it can be dangerous. So we want to recalibrate our torque tables so that everything is working the way Ford has intended this system to work and we have greater control over the throttle body. Now, this is going to be purely related to our drive-by-wire throttle control, so dealing with our torque tables. It does have other influences in terms of any torque calculations in our engine control module, but the primary reason that we're gonna be calibrating this is to make sure that we have smooth drivability with our throttle body, whatever that throttle body is going to be. It could be stock, it could be aftermarket. Once we've started to change the airflow in and out of the engine, our torque will change, our torque production will change out of our engine. So if we've installed, let's say, a GT350 intake manifold or a Gen 3 intake manifold, that's gonna completely change the way the engine's going to breathe, that's gonna change the volumetric efficiency of the engine and also then affect the torque production. So we need to go into our torque tables and fix any errors that are occurring. What we're gonna do here in this tutorial is just lock a singular map point, go through the process of dialing in the torque table, so the torque and inverse table, so we get rid of any IPC wheel torque errors that we're generating. Now I have uh, kind of a two-part way that I deal with dialing in the torque tables. One, the first way we're gonna be seeing here in the tutorial is gonna be the rough in, it's gonna get you close, and then the second part is gonna be more of the fine tuning of dialing things in. Now there's no right or wrong way to go about dialing in your torque tables, however, the method I'm gonna be showing you is my kind of preferred method, this is what I've worked out over the years of working with and tuning a variety of different Coyote applications. So we're gonna go take a look at that here a little bit later. First, I wanna talk about the calibration file. What I've prepped in the calibration file, where I'm at, and then we'll move into the scanner, talk about some, uh, some things, and then we're gonna be moving into our Excel spreadsheet. I have a calculator that's gonna help us guide us in changing our torque-based tables. This is all gonna make sense and line up a little bit later in the tutorial, but let's jump in here and see exactly what I've prepped in my calibration file so we can get started. So, the file that I'm working with here, I've labeled this torque tuning. Now this torque tuning calibration file is exactly what we were working with when we were talking about the speed density tuning uh, a couple tutorials ago. So everything here is the same. Um, I just labeled a different name so I have a different reference point um, so I know that this is what I'm gonna be calibrating and this is what I'm gonna be working with for this tutorial. So in my torque tuning, I have one in and locked myself to the map point zero. Let's talk about that real quick. We're gonna go in here to engine. Let's see how I've done this. And we've talked about this before, but just wanna be as thorough as possible, making sure I've covered all my bases and I'm explaining everything 100% so you're aware of exactly what's going on here. So if I go in here into, uh, we jump into our airflow and then we jump into our variable camshaft. We can see here under our map point configuration, I've set everything to zero except in this case mapped point zero. I'm going to be using that as my locked map point so I can calibrate the torque and inverse table for this map point not worry about having any other influencing from any other map points as I'm driving around. Now technically speaking you could dial in all of the map points in the torque tables at the same time if you used a filter function in our VCM scanner and you ran your normal VCT schedule mode you'd be able to filter through and populate data only associated to a certain map point with a certain weighting factor. We'll talk about that when we look in the VCM scanner, but I find that that can leave things out and it's not the most desirable. It can take a little bit more time um, trying to dial everything in. So I just like to lock the map points just as we found with speed density. And in fact, if you're locking, let's say your map point zero to do your speed density tuning, once the speed density tuning is done, you know that the speed density table is 100%, you know you've dialed your math in already, the torque table, the dial it in at map point zero, going from speed density, finishing that up, 
keeping it on the same map point, keeping it locked on the same map point, zero in this case, you could go right into the torque table tuning, and then after that's done, you can move right into the spark timing tuning. So you can actually go through kind of an order of operations of dialing things in. It's always first mass, mass airflow, then speed density, then torque, then spark timing. That's how I always move through the calibration process. But I'm gonna be just obviously breaking this up in separate tutorials so we can see what this looks like um, individually and being as thorough as possible. So I've locked my map point zero here. We can see they've turned that on. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.